Hello, it's Alex, the Bookubus. Today I'm bringing you another Bleak Week video and I'm going to be talking about some Bleak book recommendations. If you didn't see my previous videos, there is an introduction to Bleak Week and the concept of it, and I also shared some Bleak film recommendations, so I will leave those videos linked if you haven't seen them already and would like to check them out. So in this video I'm going to be recommending five books that I thought were pretty bleak. So if you're looking for something that is a bit more challenging rather than entertaining, then these are five books I would highly recommend picking up. I feel like a couple of books that always seem to be on like bleak lists would be The Road by Cormac McCarthy and The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. Yes, definitely agree with putting those on a bleak list, um, but I feel like everyone has at least heard of those already if they haven't already read them. I thought they were both amazing books, um, but yeah, in this video I wanted to talk about some other ones that either you might not have heard of, or if you have, you might not have picked up yet, and maybe this will inspire you to do so. So speaking of The Girl Next Door, I am going to be recommending a book based on the same case. This one is Let's Go Play at the Adamses by Mendel W. Johnson. I do have a separate review video for this one, so I'll leave that one linked if you want to go check out some more of my thoughts. But yeah, this is about a group of children, their parents go away on holiday and they hire a babysitter to come in and stay with them for the duration of their absence. And the kids have some local friends who, you know, they all hang out together and one day they decide to tie the babysitter up and they think this is a really fun game. Um, things progress from there and none of it is fun, <laughs> let's just say that. This one is a disturbing read as well as being a bleak one, as you can probably imagine. And yeah, I'm not going to go into any further detail, but there are just, let's just say there are different reasons for why this is so bleak. Um, it's not just the thing that happens with the babysitter. I feel like this one has garnered a reputation and something of a following over recent years, um, but I do still think it's very underrated and more people should give it a read. I think it's very thought-provoking and very insightful into the minds of the characters here, um, including the babysitter and the kids and yeah, their reasons for doing certain things. It's one that made me cry and has definitely stayed with me. Next up is The Auctioneer by Joan Sampson. This is set in a small town and we're following one family in particular and you know, they're not exactly wealthy but they get by and a new guy moves into town and he sets up an auction to raise money for the community and the local police force and he asks all of the residents to donate things that he can auction off. And they all think this is a great idea. You know, we definitely have some things we don't need. You can have them. But he keeps coming back asking for more and more. And, you know, they don't have more to give. So yeah, a really seemingly simple concept for the story, but really effective and well-written, very unsettling and bleak in tone. I also have a review video for this one, so if you want to hear more of my thoughts I'll leave that linked if you want to check it out. Um, but yeah, I think this is a slow burn, but well worth putting, you know, the time in and seeing the story develop. Next up is Notice by Heather Lewis, and I have to credit Black Acre Doe for bringing this one to my attention. I had not heard of it or the author before. Um, but it was, yeah, based on him talking about it that made me want to track it down and give it a read. And super bleak, uh, very disturbing. It's one that has also stayed with me and will likely do so for some time. It's about a character who has a, you know, regular day job and not much else really going on in her life. And she starts working as a sex worker and meeting guys at this particular bar and one time she goes home with this particular guy and on arrival at the home 
there's also this guy's wife and so there's this threesome situation going on which gets dark pretty quickly and yeah that's just the tip of the iceberg really here um the story with the three of those there's a lot more going on there than what i will mention and then there's also more of the story aside from that you know that relationship um but i feel like i didn't know much going into this one so i wouldn't want to give too much away here either but yeah it's very hard to read at times there were like a couple of moments where i was literally like why am i fucking reading this it was it was that awful um i had to actually question you know why i was still reading um and it's not often that that happens it's also a very sad book heartbreaking um yeah seeing this character's life spiral the descent into these compulsions and addictions and yeah is there a way out of that definitely a challenging read but yeah one that i think definitely has an audience okay next up is the vegetarian by han kang this is about a woman who is married and has you know just a pretty regular life but she starts having these very vivid and disturbing dreams and the content of them makes her want to stop eating meat um, and this is not something that is very typical in her culture and so her husband and her family are very taken aback by this decision and she is trying to assert herself and you know just claim this little bit of independence um, but yeah the husband and family do not make it easy for her and the novel has a really interesting format in that it's told in three parts from different perspectives and we yeah we witness the unraveling of the main character as it goes from this initial decision to stop eating meat into yeah something much more um yeah this is a very bleak of course um and very haunting book it's one that i found was a very unique reading experience and definitely left me feeling pretty uh shell-shocked by the end um but yeah beautifully written and a really excellent reading experience and this is one that yeah did have quite a bit of buzz around it when it first came out but it's been some years since then and i think it's one that is well worth picking up and giving a read yourself if you haven't already done so and last up is marabou stork nightmares by irvin welsh this is a book that i read some years ago and thought was fantastic and i actually just reread it earlier this year and it still really held up this is about a male character who grew up in a dysfunctional family and he also got into like football hooliganism as he got older and the story is told from the perspective of him being in a hospital bed and it flips back and forth throughout different times of his life and also there is a hallucinatory element to the story as he is in hospital and is having these hallucinatory experiences it's written in a very interesting format uh, in that it yeah flits around a lot i would say one of the main themes of the book is the cycle of abuse and the idea that an abused person can also become an abuser themselves later in life again not necessarily an easy read but i think a very compelling one and uh, yeah it is disturbing at times it isn't afraid to get into some grim details and descriptions um but yeah i think it is excellently written and i know irvin welsh is a very big name in literature but this is one of his that i don't really hear much talk about um, but it's definitely one of his that stood out to me so those are some bleak book recommendations for when you are wanting that kind of thing in your reading life do let me know if you've read any of these i would love to hear your thoughts let me know if you have any bleak book recommendations thank you ever so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and hopefully i will see you again in my next video bye